Hi, my name is Ian Duncan, and I am the author of the CSound 6 object for Max, which is largely a port of Victor Lazzarini's work for Pure Data. It's a new minimal CSound object for Max MSP that uses the CSound API. And this video is just meant to show you the features briefly for the 0.2 release. Okay. Here I have the CSound 6 help file. The object can accept a CSD file or an ORC and SCO pair, or for that matter, just an ORC file if you want to uh, turn things on from there and only use real-time events. It determines how many inlets and outlets it should have from the number of channels in your CSound file. The first outlet is reserved for message output, and then there will be uh, your number of channel audio outputs from the right. It does uh, real-time audio input on the top and receives both messages and audio on the left-hand inlet. So uh, when we start it up, it's going to compile the CSD file that's inside the object. In this case, I'm using the one that's in the help object, and I'm going to uh, turn on message output so we can see CSound's message output here. Recompile with a reset message. And you see on the right, we get our standard CSound output with the table drawing and all that stuff. And down here we have the controls. So we can start CSound, stop it, rewind, and offset. All of this can happen in real time and, and is pretty much instantaneous. So here's a little few notes for the test. Stop. Start will restart, rewind, jump around in time. When the score is finished, it will send out a bang. In this case, we won't see that because this score is set to run for an hour for real-time events. Okay, so that's the basics. Here's the tab for real-time events. So we can send in um, I events for instruments, F events for functions, and also tell it to end. Those are the only three real-time events. We can also use max symbols. So the object after the initial I, F, or E We'll take anything that you put in as a max symbol and convert it into a string. So this makes it a lot easier to deal with C sound strings because uh, dealing with quotation marks in max is, is a bit of a pain. So for example, there we go. That's my instrument called square. And this allows us to use variable interpolation. Play, play my square or my pulse instrument. We've got buffer and table IO. Right now it's fairly simple. Got some planned improvements, but at the moment we can copy a table in its entirety to a buffer. That's aliased with a short form name, do vice versa with a buffer to a table. And we can also write individual points to a C sound table or a collection of points. So the table write is aliased as tab W. And if given only one point, it will write one. If given a bunch of points, it will write as many as are there, provided they fit. So for instance, I've written this to table one. Now I'm going to copy that table into the buffer and take a look at the buffer. And there are our expected values from this message. Finally, we have control channel input and output, which is probably the most exciting part of this for me. And to be honest, the actual reason I uh, created the object. So we've got the Chan set code for setting uh, a named K channel from a message. And we also are supporting the older controls input, although that's not really recommended uh, because of how it runs under the hood. I think it's not as efficient and thread safe, so I would stick to Chanset if you can. This is writing to a named K channel in Max. And then uh, we have output from them. So we're supporting the older out value opcode. Uh, in this case, I'm demonstrating I've got an event uh, from the out value instrument, and it's just going to send a message. There we go, out value chan2. I'll show you what that instrument looked like. So here is the out value instrument with the out value opcode. So that one's quite straightforward. If you call out value, it's going to send that out, outlet zero. That's what's going on there. And then the new facility um, that I'm excited about is K channel listening. So the out channel command, given a K chan name or a you know, max uh, C sound channel name, which have, are updated at, at K rate in this case. Given a C sound channel name and a number will automatically listen to that channel and output a max message um, this number times K samps. So if that's set to one, 
we're going to listen on every K pass to the named channel LFO1. In this case, uh, that's set to 128. So every 128 K passes will automatically get an out channel message. And so I have uh, an instrument here. Let's take a look at that. The LFO instrument over here. It's going to make an LFO and it's going to write to the channel named LFO1. I'll start listening to it here and I'll start the instrument and we can see there's our LFO. So if the instrument stops, it will keep listening to that channel and the instrument is stopped playing, the channel is just parked at the last value. So you could use a release envelope if you wanted to set it to zero. If you want to stop listening to that, you can send the out channel message with a time of zero. Okay, now uh, the exciting facility here that I think is going to really add to um, the usefulness in Max is that by using named channels and named P fields, we can make short lived processes that output to a named channel very easily from an instrument that does this. So in this example, I have created an instrument called make LFO. Here it is over here, uh, right there. It receives a string in P field five and writes an LFO into the channel named for that string. And if you're not familiar with C sound, one of the interesting things about C sound compared to Max is that by default, instruments are always polyphonic. So when we call make LFO, we're going to make a new LFO process for the duration of that instrument, that notes life. So this provides a very easy way to make a collection of ad hoc processes that write a control value. So in this case, I'm going to make my LFO. I'm sending it LFO2. That, that could be dynamic. And I'm going to say that I'd like to listen to it every 128 K passes. That's pretty high. Um, you, you won't have any problems listening to it every one K pass. Uh, however, just for the purpose of the demonstration and being able to read the messages, that's a, a little easier. So I'm going to make that LFO instrument and then I'm going to start listening to that channel. And you can see we've got LFO2 running up and down for my duration of note. And so that's a very easy way to make control rate DSP uh, opcodes that turn into max messages. I hope this is uh, of interest to you. It's been fun to build. Please let me know if there are any issues on the GitHub project page, um, which will be linked in the video description. And I hope you can build some fun stuff with it. Thanks.